Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the classic example of managing approval for time off requests. Okay, let's get started. So we'll start out in Workflow First Designer, and here we're going to click Create Application to start our application. The application is going to be called Leave Manager. This takes us to the application settings screen. Now we click New Application tab to add a new tab at the top, just like these tabs here. And we're going to call that Vacation Requests. That takes us to the application tab settings. Now we're going to click Add Workflow to start our workflow design. OK, we just click OK here. And this takes us to the workflow designer. To get started, we go to the workflow setting and we click on add entry button. This is how we start our workflow. So this is going to be enter vacation request. Okay, the role is not going to be set to anyone because anyone can enter this in. But we'll go to input field to put in some fields that are going to be requested from the user. We're going to have a from date, which is going to be a date field. We're also going to have a to date, which is also going to be a date field. And the third field we're going to enter in will be the total days. To keep this simple, we're just going to have this entered in by the user. That's going to be a floating point because they could actually put in a fraction if it's, for example, three and a half days. That's all we need to enter in for our initial vacation request form. So we click OK on that. And we see we have our first stage right here. The next thing we want to do is to add what happens after they enter in that vacation request. So what we want to do in this case is add a choice underneath that. So we click there and we're going to put approve. And the role for this is going to be a manager because the manager is going to be the one approving the vacation request. And they don't have to enter anything in so we can just click OK right there. But there will be another option, another choice, and that is to reject it. So for the second choice we're going to put reject. For this we do want to have them enter something in. They're going to be entering in a rejection reason which they can put in as multiple lines of text. You notice that the role is automatically set to manager because it's on the same level as the approve right here. And that concludes our initial workflow. So let's just build that. To do that we can do it multiple ways. The easiest way is to click on Quick Publish, this button right here. OK, a couple of seconds later, that brings up with the completion text um, and a link that you can follow, which takes you to your new application. OK, so here is our Leave Manager application that we've created. And sure enough, we have a vacation request tab and we have our button right here that says enter vacation request. So let's try it out by clicking that button. Let's say the from date will be um, August to the 5th of August. And that's going to be a total of five days. Now that gets submitted. Now, what would normally happen here is another user, the manager, would click on this and they would get the option of approving and rejecting. Now, because we're automatically logged in as administrator, which you can see up here, um, we also get the options to click these buttons too. Usually, the admin user will be protected and the user will be forced to log in as their own user login. Um, but just for simplicity, we're going to go through it as an administrator. So here I can click Approve or Reject, so I'm going to click Approve. And sure enough, that's finished off the workflow. Now that would also send an email to the originator to tell them that it has been approved. Um, the manager would normally get an email saying that you have to go in and review the vacation request, including all the details about the request in the email. Now to do those, what we normally do is we create some users. So let's go to the Users tab and show how that works. The first thing you do, you click on the Users tab and then you can click on New User or New Approver. 
Now the difference is that if it's just a regular user who will only be entering in requests, then you click on new user. If it's someone who's going to be approving workflow, then click on new approver, and that creates them as a power user, which enables them to actually approve workflow. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll add in new approver. Um, we're going to have someone called Mr. Manager. And I'm just going to put in a dummy email here. But what's important is what we select in the roles. Now the role for this is going to be a manager. Now we have an important setting over here that's worth taking note of also, receive role-based emails. Sometimes you want to receive emails to do with your role and sometimes you don't. So for example, if you had 50 different managers, you wouldn't necessarily want them all to get an email every time um, something needs to be approved. Sometimes you want to actually determine who gets that by having maybe uh, a catch-all email address for all managers. Um, which gets sent out every so often, or maybe you just want to make the managers go in every so often and then they'll see the alerts related to them. So we're going to leave that as no for now, but just to demonstrate you can do that. Now when you first create a user, you're going to notice that it's going to come up with this. And all you have to do is click on the configuration tab in another tab and click the link that it gives you to create the configuration record. That just lets you set up a few little things in there that's uh, important for the running of the system. So you go back here after that's set up and then click OK and it will create it'll create the user and it will also e email them with a temporary password. In our case we're going to click on the, click on the user and set the password ourselves. I'm going to make that equal to welcome1. OK. So now we have the manager set up. Let's go in as admin again and we'll enter in another vacation request. This time we're going to say it's the 9th to the 13th. OK, now we're going to sign out and log in as the user we just created. And you notice straight away that we have a red badge at the top to say that they have one item which has been assigned to them and that they need to look at. And we highlight, highlight that here as well so they can easily click on that. Um, they can easily see where they need to click. So again, when they get in here, they can see approve, reject, and query. The original user will not be able to see that because they do not have the manager role. So this time we're going to reject it. and that will send out the notification to the originator saying it's been rejected. You also not notice that automatically the originator is added and that is the person who entered in the workflow along with the current state of the workflow whether it's been rejected, approved or whether it's still pending. Um, you can modify what fields are shown up on here. We'll, do, we'll go through that in a different video. Now we also have a home page um, which will normally show you what is pending at any one time. Now we don't have anything pending right now, so let's sign out. Go pick back in as admin. Enter in another request. Let's say the 23rd to the 24th for two days. Now let's sign out and switch back to the manager. Now we see we have the item marked as red here. But if we go to the home page, we'll also see that we have one pending task here. Um, we have a list of all of the pending workflow throughout the system. No matter what tab it's on, they'll all be um, combined into one list here. Um, here we have a kind of pie chart which shows you um, how many tasks are pending for the different roles that you have because some people may have multiple roles. Uh, and we also have uh, a history here of the different things that you've actually approved or rejected or worked on 
on each day. That can be very useful to, to basically see what you were doing on a particular day. Um, at the bottom of that we also have a little activity chart which will show you how many items were completed um, on a particular week going back in history. Okay, now another thing that we can do is that when we have something assigned to us instead of actually approving or rejecting it we can also query the originator to ask them a question for clarification about their request. It'll then, once it goes into a query state, it then goes back to the originator and you no longer see the approve or reject and they will then have to work on it as, as an assigned item to them, respond to the workflow before we will then be able to approve it or reject it. So that's very useful for getting clarifications and also for keeping a history of whatever was actually requested which goes into the comments field underneath the workflow item. A second thing you can do is you can reassign it to a different user. If you click on assign here, you can select either a user or a particular role and send it to a different role with some notes and have it assigned to them instead so they can then process that, so long as they have permission to do that. Um, that's one option. A second option is that you can actually click on remind me later. And what that will do is send it to either... Um, Sorry, it will take it out of the assignment and it will send it to the calendar on the home page as a reminder when that date comes about and then it will reassign it back to you on that date adding in any notes that you want to put in here. You can send that to a particular user or you can send it to a role so let's say you want to send it to the operations group or the support group um, you can have them reminded about it uh, maybe in a week's time or you can send it to a particular user and have them reminded instead. Okay, that just about wraps it up for this video. So in the next few videos, we're going to be adding some more functionality, such as second level approval through conditional stages, and a lot more. So Workflow First is free for small teams, or you can sign up for a free cloud trial at workflowfirst.com. Thank you.